All right, greetings, Gherkins. We, we get to talk again so soon. That, that's the joy of having a few days off. Um, also, you can tell I've had a few days off because I'm a grizzled prospector man. Oh, uh, remember um, Wise Beard Man from back in the internet days with the whole uh, anonymous attacking Scientology and then Wise Beard Man popped up? And so maybe I'm Wise Beard Man, might be more likely. I mean, Wise Beard Man or Grizzled Prospector. But again, I've had a couple of days off having some coffee, uh, and that's just my life. Who cares? We're here to talk about horror movies. So let's talk about the 10, and this is something I know. People often debate whether or not I know music, but I do know my horror movies. So we're going to talk about the 10 best horror movies of 2023, in my opinion, which is the only opinion that really matters uh, when you think about it. So let me have a sip of coffee. Mmm. It's got a haunted house on it. That's not. That's a tree. That's a house. It's got a haunted house on it, so you know I know my horror movies. Okay, at number 10, it's Bo is Afraid. Uh, now, a lot of you are saying, what? No. It's not a horror movie. No, A24 did it, but it's not a horror movie. And I'm saying, yes, it is. Watch the beginning of Bo is Afraid, and then watch the first 10 minutes of the remake of Dawn of the Dead. It very close, very close. It's almost like a zombie film in the beginning. It becomes a nightmarish. I consider Eraserhead to be a horror film. So if Eraserhead is a horror film, and also um, Desperate Living or Pink Flamingos, those work as horror movies. Um, then Bo is Afraid is a horror movie. You can argue with me about it, but you'll be wrong. And in the end, you'll have to hang your head in shame. All right, next up, at number nine spot, a film called Totally Killer, which, again, a little controversial because it was a comedy. But I thought it was a really good comedy because it made fun of the 80s. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on TV now that kind of glorifies the 80s, like Stranger Things. Couldn't pay me to watch Stranger Things. I was watching, so the beginning of that, and they were like, The Demogorgon? I'm like, what do you mean, The It's Demogorgon. I literally, that's how much of the show I, I watched, five minutes of the very first episode, and said, no, thank you. Um but this show did a great job of making fun of the 80s, including what weed was like in the 80s and security. <laughs> School security was non-existent in the 80s. So um, I, I recommend Totally Killer. They tried to kind of follow that formula for some other things. They tried to make a film called It's a Wonderful Knife uh, that did not work. Justin Long was in that, and he appears later on our list redeeming himself uh, or trying to redeem himself from It's a Wonderful Knife. It's a Wonderful Knife was not good. Totally Killer, though, was, was quite entertaining. So they, they were fine. All right. In the number eight spot, it's Dark Harvest. Uh, Dark Harvest, I thought, was a really good film. Had a lot of potential. Had a weird Twilight Zone uh, feeling. You know, here's this town that kind of exists outside of everything, and something's not quite right. And you can kind of figure it out as you went along. You can see a lot of the twists and turns coming, but I still thought it was really, really good. And exceptional use of the damned on the soundtrack. Um, there, neat, neat, neat gets used on the soundtrack in an incredible scene. So um, they, they got extra points for that. It might have even been higher up on the list for that. Dark Harvest, I think, could have kind of worked. Um, I think they were trying to introduce uh, a Skeleton Jack or Halloween Jack. I can't remember what they called it now. Um, but uh, um, as like a character that they could franchise out. Um, but, you know, if it's a good movie, you can't franchise it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't work. There's no franchising in good horror movies. No, the more you franchise it, the less good it gets. Um, in the number uh, that was number eight was Dark Harvest. In the number seven spot, uh, it is a film called Barbarian. That you may have heard of. Uh, this had Justin Long in it, so he's kind of redeeming himself a little bit uh, for being in It's a Wonderful Knife, which was a terrible movie. Uh, Barbarian was interesting because it upset a lot of people who originally thought they were watching a rom com. <laughs> First of all, it's it, it, it's got Bill Sarsgaard in it, um, and uh, um, it, it you know Pennywise the clown is in a movie. Romantic comedy is not, not going to happen. Uh, the weird thing was, it, it stuck in my heart even more a little bit later on because I actually had to stay in an Airbnb in Detroit later on, and the film was pretty accurate in that area. Um, fell apart, I think, a little bit in the third act, um, but I did like the, the switching gears. I like, is it a rom-com? No, it's not a rom-com. Oh, is it a thing about, you know, uh, the Me Too movement and just Justin Long being just a, a shit heel? maybe not that and it just went into a really interesting area had kind of been done in films in the 70s but I'm noticing a lot of uh, younger filmmakers are discovering the films of the 70s and saying hey I can maybe retool this and make this work this is interesting so all right let's go number six infinity pool at this point I would pay to see Mia Goth read from the phone book um 
And that's the thing about Mia Goth is if you're in a, a movie and you turn and look and your co-star is Mia Goth, you're probably not going to see the end of that movie. Uh, she was in the remake of Suspiria. Uh, she was in X. She's in Pearl. She's in a lot of films where people get bumped off. I liked Infinity Pool a lot. Uh, I just liked it super creepy. Again, some people say, well, it's science fiction. I No, it's a horror film, and it's disturbing. And then other people were like, oh, my God, the sex scenes. I'm like, what decade did you people grow up in? I grew up in the 70s when every movie had a very blatant sex scene in it. Very, very, you know, like, oh, um, it, check out to, um, Don't Look Now. I mean, you know, the, I don't want to say graphics. The graphic sex scene sounds just like, you know, some sort of snuff film or something. But Infinity Pool, I thought, was really, really good and really disturbing. It had that, you know, don't don't leave the compound feel, which I thought was, was super nice. Nice touch. So good work, Infinity uh, Pool. We're going to pull up now a number five spot is a film a lot of people didn't hear of. Uh, which is a shame. Um, it's actually one of my wife Vienna's, fav- probably her favorite horror movie, or definitely in her top three. It's in my top five. Um, and this is a film for 2023, and this is a film called Unwelcome. Um, this film, be warned, uh, this film, in the first 15 minutes of it, there is a horrifying scene. Uh, this is like a, a nail biter. Uh, in the, and then um, it kind of switches gears a little bit uh, and, and just becomes completely insane. Uh, it's got, it's got the, uh, the engineer from Star Trek in it, the next generation. And whenever he turns up in a movie, you know that's going to be good. I think it's Colin Meany. He was in uh, uh, Get Him to the Greek. He's in, he just keeps turning up. I think he played, I think it's all something where he played Henry VIII in it. Uh, but I really, really good acting in this film. The special effects are uh, mostly practical effects, and, and they rule. And the setup, the, the, they keep ramping it up. So it's one of those things where you kind of know what's going to happen, but the characters don't. Uh, but again, uh, that, that first uh, 15 minutes with the, with the harrowing scene is kind of recreated in a way at the end of the movie. So there's a nice sort of circular loop there. Um, I think much smarter than it's getting credit for. So um, definitely see it. Mother Red Cap. If you see my wife go, Mother Red Cap. Um, in my number, that was number five, in my number four spot, it's a film called Brooklyn 45. This is another one a lot of you did not see, and it's a shame. Uh, Larry Fezzedin is a guy whose name is just, just all over horror movies. He appears in them, uh, sometimes he'll just be a voice on the radio. If you see Innkeepers, you can hear his voice in the background, apparently that's from a party, uh, that he holds every year. Um, he also, I think the film Southbound, he's like a voice on the radio, but he's also in films. Uh, so uh, Larry, is, he was the, uh, the body at the bottom of the stairs for one film. Um, but he would get to talk every now and then because he wasn't quite dead. We'll talk about that film some other time. But um, Larry Fezzedin, uh is just, I, I'm always happy to see him in a movie. Uh, this is a really disturbing flick, and it's filmed like a play. I imagine it may have been a play initially, uh, but it's just four or five people in one room. I don't want to give away too much. In one room for the pretty much the whole movie, uh, and it is, the acting is just top-notch. These are people who were sort of uh, intelligence service uh, during World War II, and this is after World War II, and they're having a little spiritual get-together, and all I can tell you, other than, you got to seek this one out, and you got you got to watch it, really, you'll thank me for it. You're like, how did I not know about that film? All right, and the number three spot is another film that, that you almost didn't know about, um, if the studios would have had their way. The film's called Cobweb. Um, I really like this film. It had Homelander in it, um, and it had a great Halloween vibe, which would have been wonderful if they would have released it around Halloween. Uh, but the studio that had their hands on it did not release it around Halloween. They released it, I think, around in July, sometime in the summer. So, yeah, uh, your Halloween film uh, released around the 4th of July gives you, well, it's Homelander, and it gives you a sense of patriotism. Um, again, it, I think this could be up there with Trick or Treat as a film you might watch every year around Halloween. Um, not brilliant. It, it does, again, feed back to some of those 1970s made-for-TV movies. The plot, very similar. Um, but I just, it has a super spooky vibe, and then I looked up to see where it was filmed in, because the film, the filming I grew up in, um, semi-rural Pennsylvania and had the hills and, and, and the houses look the same and I was like wow where'd they film this? Did they film this out like you know between Philly and Pittsburgh somewhere? Uh, no it turned out it was filmed in Romania uh, there's a big studio in Romania where you can go and film stuff and I think 
if if you're looking to film some creepy stuff, Dracula's Homeland is a, a good place. So Cobweb, yeah, you might see what was happening coming, but I I really liked it, and I think it should uh, rate higher on more people's end of the year lists. So it made it to number three on mine. Oh, um, okay, in the number two spot, uh, talk to me. Yeah, you, know, you saw talk to me was was going to be coming. Uh, they make the, the by the way they make the prop hand from talk to me that you can buy, and they also make a bong version of it. So um, I'm not I'm not joking. A24, they don't care anymore. Um, they're on top of the world. They can do what they want. I wanted to. I, I still kind of want. They were sold out when I last looked. I still kind of want the talk to me hand. I don't want the bong version. I don't I don't smoke the devil's lettuce. But uh, yeah, I mean, talk to me. Admit it. You loved it. You loved. You you saw that film and you were like, oh, they're going to go there, and they did. You know the fact that nothing was hidden. They this is what teenagers would do. If they had a hand that you could touch and and then talk to spirits, they would just film everybody getting baked and playing with it. And then they would put that on social media and people would watch it and go, oh, this is fake. I I love that. I just love the the smartness to it. Uh, Also, Australian film. Australia is a very scary place. Look up Adelaide sometime. Um, So it was good to see a, a nice return to Australian horror. Like Lake Mungo is one of my favorite films of all time, and that's that's a great example of Oz horror. So Oz exploitation, they used to call it back in the day, when he was making these insane, insane Australian films. There's a giant kangaroo taking my baby. Um, so, yeah, just it, it, you've probably seen Talk to Me, but if you haven't, go back and watch it again. And I think they're going to make a sequel. I don't know. That's going to be a tough one to franchise. That, that hand is going to be a tough Halloween costume for people to have. All right, and the number one spot, and I hope you got to see this movie. If you didn't, you must. It's called When Evil Lurks. Um, this is from the same guy uh, who did a film called Terrified. Not to be confused with Terrifier. Terrifier is the one with Art the Clown. And I have a lot of respect for those Art the Clown movies, believe it or not. Um, some people are like, those are dumb. I'm like, no, they're, they're dumb in a very smart way. Uh, but Terrified uh, was a film, uh, Argentinian film, as this one is, as is When Evil Lurks. Um, Terrified was an Argentinian film that basically um, took place in one neighborhood. People were like, oh, it's a haunted house. Well, what if an entire neighborhood was haunted? What if an entire neighborhood was haunted and, like, there were cops who were just like, yeah, this, this sort of stuff happens every now and then. Um, there, there is a scene involving a, a child's corpse and a glass of milk in Terrified. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's worth it just for that whole thing. But, man, Terrified was really good. So I went into this with big expectations, and my expectations were not dashed. I was very happy with When Evil Lurks. I, I thought it was fantastic. It keeps up that sense of uh, terrified, where, yeah, people kind of understand how this stuff works. And they're like, yeah, here's what we got to do. We have a set of rules that we have to follow. And if you do this, this, and this, bad things won't happen. Uh, if you don't do them, bad things will. And I just thought that was very clever. I like, I like when there are rules for horror. You know, you, you take away the rules and then anything can happen. You're like, wait a minute. Ten minutes ago, you said that Dracula could only be killed with a stake through his heart. And now Dracula can be killed by certain infomercials? What? Why? Stick to your your rules, people. All right, so those are my top ten of 2023. And now I'm going to count them backwards and just put up the list. At number one, it's When Evil Lurks. Number two, Talk to Me. Number three, Cobweb. Number four, the much, much missed Brooklyn 45. Go seek that one out uh, at number five. And also film people, uh, film, uh, people also kind of missed, uh, missed out on uh, Unwelcome. Uh, at number six, Infinity Pool. You might have seen that one. Uh, at number seven, Barbarian. Pretty likely you saw that one. Uh, go back and see it again, though. Um, eight, Dark Harvest. Uh, kind of hit or miss in some spots, but I, I think you'll genuinely like it. Uh, number nine, Totally Killer. If you just want to see the 80s, get the shit kicked out of them. Totally Killer works. And then in the number 10 spot, Bo is Afraid, which on, on the disturbing meter is way, way up there. All right, folks, uh, I hope you go back and watch these if you have a couple days off or, or next weekend, the weekend after. This is, that would be the weekend after New Year's, and it's kind of a dull weekend sometimes. Just go back and, and, and pick a bunch of horror films and watch them. All right, thank you very much for putting up with my nonsense. I appreciate it.